You guys ready? Yeah. All right, so we have a special guest with us today. I'm sure you know who he is. I was fortunate enough to coach him for over 10 years, and he was one of my favorite athletes to coach, and, and more so than coaching, just the day-to-day -day dialogue and the teaching that, that I got from working with Alex. And you know, without any further ado, I want to introduce to you the CEO of A-Rod Corp, three-time MLB MVP, and top-line sports broadcaster, my friend, A-Rod. I'm not used to applause when I get to Boston, <laughs> so we are off to a good start. Good morning, everybody. All right, so Al, we got a couple good questions here. I'm gonna start off with something very comfortable for you in the world of sports. And uh, we're gonna talk sports contracts. Okay. I wanna talk about athletes and, you know, back in the day an athlete would stay with the same team for quite some time. And now we start to see them bounce around and, uh, you know, chasing that bigger contract. You know, why do you think they're going after the biggest contract? You know, as a young player, um, young players often chase the headlines. And when you look at it, um, as you get a little bit older, you realize that you should be spending more time in which team are you going to play for and which community are you gonna go represent. And as you mature and you get into your second contract, if you're lucky enough, you realize that you have to make decisions based on what's gonna make you happy and not just the final end number. But on that end, Dana, the one thing to remember is, unlike everybody in the room, the average career for a Major League Baseball player is five and a half years. You make about 90% of your income in your entire life, 90% from age 20 to 30. So then you're thinking, what happens from age 31 to 80? And then less than 5% of the players in Major Leagues today, and there's 750 of them, less than 5% have a college degree. So if you have that information alone, you will short that stock. And that's why, is hopefully you understand now why more athletes go bankrupt or are in financial issues uh, post-career. Post yeah, we see, we see a lot of guys, I know some guys that, that we worked with and played with, you know, they struggle quite a bit when they get out of the game. They're searching for identity, they're searching for what's next. And I think, you know, this is a great example of figuring out what's next while you're playing. And A-Rod Corp, when did that start? You know, I started A-Rod Corp out of fear. And I started, Dana, when we were kids. I started when I was in my early 20s. Um, you know, growing up, single mother uh, out of Miami, um, we never owned anything. We always had to rent. And what was really discomforting, it was every year or every 18 months, we had to continue to move to another apartment building because a landlord will keep raising the rent. And I remember as an 11 or 12 year old boy, I got down to my knees. Of course, my mom was a secretary in the morning. She served tables at night. I got down to my knees and I said, dear Lord, if I ever get a chance to switch places with the landlord, I would take that shot. And when I was 22 years old, I found a duplex in Miami. I needed about a 48, thousand dollar down payment and I did not want to spend the little money that I had so what did I do I woke up in the middle of the night and I said wait I have two watches in my safe so I sold my two watches I did a little card signing and that was my way of raising some cash I bought the duplex a couple of years later I sold it for double then I bought four then I bought 60 and then I grew that portfolio to about 14,000 apartment units uh, in about 15 states all over the Southeast. And that was kind of the arc of starting small and just building it one brick at a time. Which is the key to success, mm -hmm. one brick at a time. That's right. Cool. So Alex has uh, two very special young ladies in his life, Natasha and Ella. And, uh, Only two? Well, <laughs> I don't want to get you in trouble, Dana. Yeah. <laughs> Three. So, but we're going to talk about the two young ones that are uh, residing in Miami right now. Four. <laughs> I'm trying four, to do math. Four, four in Miami. And, uh, you know, 
for you, what what do you find um, you know excites you most about the times that your daughters are growing up in right now? I think what excites me about the future for my daughters is um, what excites me is what gets me nervous is is how small the planet has become, um, how global uh, with one touch. Uh, through social media, digital, uh, there's so many different platforms that people can access you. I mean, you, you think about days that we didn't have cell phones. Now you have cell phones. Now you don't even need cell phones to communicate. They can do everything on their iPad or their computer. Uh, when we punish our little one, we take their phone away, she laughs at me. She's like, I got DM, I got email. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I can't, I can't play defense. I can't cover every spot. So, um, yeah, so that, that definitely scares me. Uh, I think we, they have to be ready, Dana, for something that you and I never had to prep for, right? Um, there's all these things going on uh, on social media, online, that you, know, you, you have to defend your, your babies against, and you hope that, that they make all the right decisions. But that's definitely uh, the whole cyber, cyber bullying and all that stuff is super, something definitely that's in our radar, Cynthia and I as parents. Um, but as far as my vision for them, I always, from day one, uh, I've told them, you know, go for CEO, go to be the president, um, and always reach for number one. Do not settle. Um, you know, be the first general manager, a uh, female out there, woman, who would be something amazing. But uh, I think reaching for number one and really not thinking in a limited way, I always say that the last hundred years was uh, all about us men. The next hundred is all about women. Oh, yeah. Thank you.